Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we are talking about blade baits. We did a video on blade baits almost a year ago. And in that video, we promised that we would circle back around and do a more in-depth version. Uh, and we just never got around to it. So here we are, an entire year has gone by. But today we are going in-depth with blade baits. We're going to talk about why to fish them, how to fish them, which baits for which conditions, and then the gear that you need to be successful. The blade bait, if you're not familiar... The blade bait started with the Silver Buddy, which is a bait almost identical to this one here. Just a stamped steel bait with a little bit of lead on the head and a couple of hooks. Think lipless crankbait without the sound. You get all the vibration, tons of vibration, more than a lipless crankbait, but it's a silent bait. Looks, there's not much to it. There's a lot left to be desired. But there is something so magical about the blade bait when the water gets cold. This fall, we were talking to you guys over and over and over again about fishing the lipless, slow fishing it on the bottom. You saw us do that here locally. We did it back east. We did it up north. Did it for smallmouth. Did it for largemouth. But when that water truly gets cold, the low 40s dipping into the 30s, that lipless bite will start to go away and be replaced with the blade bite. The blade completely takes over during those coldest months. And then it actually hangs on a lot longer than people realize as that water starts warming back up. Traditionally, that bite would go away. But now that the paint jobs and the profiles are getting better, it's starting to stick around a little bit longer. And you can catch fish on that blade headed into the springtime. So the actual concept behind the blade, it's very simple. You know, it's a bottom fishing bait. I suppose you could chuck and wind them. I mean, I've caught a handful of fish doing that, mostly reeling back to the boat, but that's not the concept. Concept is throw it out. Whew, see if I don't get myself hooked. Let that thing settle the bottom. And then when you give it a little pull on the rod, it's going to swim up. It's going to vibrate up and then settle back to bottom. Vibrate up, settle back to bottom. More often than not, You'll pull that bait up, and then when you slack it to let it fall, that's when the fish eat it. And when you go to make your next pull, there's already a fish on there. So you're just pulling, pulling, and then all of a sudden, it's a fish. So any added weight you want to swing on, that's it. Now, there are times where they will just tank that bait. They hit it so hard. And a lot of those, though, it still is just a nothing bite because they tank it while it's sinking on that slack line. So you just have no idea. They eat it and turn and then you lift up into them. So be prepared for that subtle bite with the blade. Now, blades have come a long way in recent years. There used to be one option. There used to be the Silver Buddy. Now there's three or four very similar options to the Silver Buddy, which are pretty much the same. Um, there are just some minor, minor differences between them. But some of the other brands have gotten much more detailed in the profiles and the colors and the weighting of those baits. But one thing I'm going to say across the board that you want to know about these baits, we're going to divide them into two categories here in a second. But the one thing that you want to understand is that across the board, pretty much all of them need to have the hardware changed out. Uh, a lot of them are going to come like this with double hooks on them. This is a vibrato. The reason why it looks like that, why it has those double hooks turned backwards, is because you can fish it on the bottom and it, it won't snag up. See, those hooks just brush across. The problem is that your hookup to land ratio is definitely lower than if you use a standard treble hook. Uh, and then take one like a Silver Buddy. The traditional way that silver buddies were done was with no split rings at all. They actually take the treble hook and cut it and then put it onto the bait. I don't love that either. So I cut those off. They do that with long shank trebles. I cut those off, put a split ring, and then a regular treble. This is that finished product. Let me show you these side by side. So this guy here is stock. Nothing on top. No split rings. Same bait once I'm done with it. We go to an owner hyperwire number three on top. 
Hyperwire number threes. And then that's Owner ST56s or a, th a 3X treble hook in a size four. Basically, we're hoping to catch big fish. That's what that boils down to. Uh, again, fishing it is very simple. The style matters. You could break them all into two styles. One is going to be that longer, slender profile like that Vortex or that Vibrato or the traditional Silver Buddy. And then the other style is going to be that, whoop, we're going to forget about that one, those shorter, stumpier, taller baits that are going to be more of a shad profile. And it really just depends on what the fish in your lake are feeding on. Are they feeding primarily on shad? Focus on that little shorter, fatter bait. Are they feeding on slender little pin minnows or something like that? Go to that longer, slender bait. If I could only have one bait in the entire genre, it would be this right here. This is a Demiki Vault. The Vault has kind of changed this thing for me. Uh, the Vault has got some fantastic colors. Again, I change all my hardware out. And it can be a little bit frustrating. You're going to need good split ring pliers with any blade baits because your front hook hanger is almost always embedded in the lead. It's very difficult to get in there. So you need good split ring pliers. You're going to go through some split rings trying to get it right, but it's worth it. Take the time to change the hardware on all these baits. Get them dialed in right because these baits catch big fish. You don't want those fish coming off. So back to this bait. The Demiki Vault comes in some killer paint jobs. There's one. Here's the little version of the vault. That gold color is one of my favorites. You've seen a smash them on that color before. And then, you know, there's eight or ten other colors. Uh, getting away from just that traditional silver or gold blade. But I'm telling you right now, these still destroy. Especially if the fish are a little deeper. If the fish are in, say, the top 10 or 15 feet of the water column. Meaning they're up, they're up along the bank. They're in the docks, they're up along brush, or up on rocky banks. They're moving up towards the pre-spawn. Those baits with a better paint job are going to get the job done a little better. But if your fish are still deep, don't sweat it. They'll smash these, they will smash these. It really doesn't matter. Now as far as where to throw a blade, you can throw it almost anywhere. I love fishing them offshore. Offshore humps and rock piles are prime locations because a lot of those offshore fish are primarily bait fish eaters anyway. That's what they target. So it's a natural place to throw the bait. But do not overlook fishing up around shallow cover underneath docks where that vibration reverberates. You can catch a lot of big fish doing that. And again, you just want to cover water. You're going to fish it a lot like that lipless. Fire it out, let it hit bottom. Pull, reel down, pull, reel down, all the way back to the boat. That's all you do. It's really simple. Anyone can do this. And when it gets heavy, when it gets heavy, set the hook. You've either got a fish or a snag. There's there's no two ways about it. Those are your options. Uh, you do need to change your hardware. The baits are so heavy. That's the thing. There's so much lead on the front of those baits that if you don't have good hardware. Those fish are going to come up, they're going to jump, and they're going to throw that thing, much like a lipless. But if you take the time to put on proper hardware, and again, down in the video description, you guys know, we're going to link all the baits, uh, and I'll break them down between the slender profiles and the fatter profiles for you, and then I'm going to tell you what size and style of hardware to put on them, because uh, that's the complicated part, knowing which one is the right one. Uh, but getting that hardware right, I can't push this enough you can have a miserable day of setting the hook and having fish come up and jump and come off or you can have a fantastic day of putting fish in the boat and it's as easy as changing out your hooks and then using the right rod for rod you want to treat it just like a lipless crankbait because it's a two treble heavy bait you need a very limber crankbait rod very limber we use a cbr 845 there are some other good options out there, but a rod where you load up and that entire rod just folds in half on that fish and you just lean on them. That whole rod's bowed up. 
Because then when they come up to j- to jump and to thrash and to shake, they can't fully unload the rod. If the rod is not limber enough, if you're using a medium heavy or a heavy, and only the tip of that rod bows, when a fish comes up and does a big shake, that rod will unload during that shake, and that's when they throw it. Does that make sense? So be careful with your rod selection. Back to the baits themselves. They're going to come in a variety of of sizes and weights. I tend to lean to the heavier weights. And that would be surprising because when you look at some of the weights that these baits come in, they're heavy. But realize that it's a steel and lead bait. It's naturally heavy. So even though it's really heavy, it may not be very large. Look how little tiny that guy is. That's the small vault. That's the standard vault. This little guy is a micro but it still weighs quite a bit. So that's why you see some, it's misleading there. You think you're buying this giant heavy bait, but it's really, it's not a big bait at all. So keep that in mind, but know that there is a special place for that little guy as well. The little vault, the little tiny silver buddy. When the fish get up, when the bait fish are spawning and you've got those little bait fish in the water, oh my goodness, they smash that little one. And anywhere that other people are throwing it lipless, you can try this because it can get them. It's a different look, different profile, no sound. You can fool those big ones. The only one that is kind of different, completely different from all the others, and I don't know how to categorize it, is this guy right here, a Sibyl Vibrato. And actually, this brings up a good point. I'm so glad I picked this bait up. I almost skipped something else for you. But this bait is pinned right in the middle. It has a ton of vibration. A ton of vibration. And I've had two really good days on this bait. Same deal. I changed all the hardware. These are EWG number four hooks. Uh, This bait vibrates so hard that the fish really have to be aggressive. I've done the best work with this one around bait fish, where the fish were actually pushing a school of bait and I got down underneath them, caught fish on this. The only downside of this style is that the hooks are out on the two ends, meaning no matter which way you're pulling it, the first thing that touches the bottom is a hook point. So it's it's snaggier than the others, but I've had great success with it. Going back to the others, you're going to see that almost every option has more than one hole for your line tie. And most of these baits are going to have a snap on them. I get rid of those snaps right away, put a split ring in their place. See how they all have more than one hole up there? They either have two or three. Here's what's going to happen. You can move between those holes. The farther back you get, so the, the nearer to center of bait, the wider the vibration that bait's gonna have. Cause it doesn't actually vibrate as much like this as it does like this. That bait's got a wide kick while it's rocking through the water. So the farther back you get, the wider that wobble, the farther forward, the tighter the wobble. I tend to fish farther forward, either the very front hole or the middle hole. I very rarely fish that back one. And it's because the vibration gets so wide that if you're in deep water, it can loop around and snag the line. You end up hanging the bait up on on yourself, on the line, a lot more often. If I stay in one of those front holes, it's easier to fish it in deeper water. Up shallow, I haven't really noticed a difference between them. I almost don't think it matters. But keep in mind, if you're snagging up a lot, changing that line type position can be a big factor. Guys, this is a fun way to fish. It's an overlooked way to fish. Guys in the north, smallmouth guys, they already know. This is what they do in the fall and the winter. It works out here too. We've been doing this for, I don't know how long I've been throwing a blade, more than 10 years. Uh, And we were late to the game, really late to the game. But we're bringing it to you and we want you to fully understand how to do it. Think of it as a lipless, but it's silent and you're just gonna fish it really slow. Take your time. It shines in the coldest of water. It shines in the 30s 
and the 40s, but it will work as that water warms up into the pre-spawn. It will keep right on working. So try it. And then once that lipless bite returns, let that blade go, switch over to the lipless. But you can find that you can catch a lot of fish during that transition. Hope this video helps. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.